Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, uh, we are going to be talking about this article that I found uh, on the church website. It's an Ensign article from 1986 called Understanding Scriptural Symbols. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you end up liking it. Um, also, please uh, share this because um, I think there's a lot of people that have kind of get sucked, have gotten sucked in by different timelines or they're watching other uh, Christian channels, you know, people that are from other churches listening to their interpretations of things. And a lot of it has to do with numbers and um, <clears throat> numbers of days and stuff like that in scripture. And I think that this could really help a lot of people out. So at some point I might go over this whole article, but I'm interested in this right here, uh, number six. I'm going to put the link for this below so you can read the whole article uh, yourself. But um, <clears throat> I think this is really important, really, really important. Number six, balance the interpretation of symbolism with other revelation and gospel knowledge. The final guideline and the most important is to fit the interpretation of any symbol into the overall scheme of gospel knowledge. <clears throat> Excuse me. No matter how clever or how logical or how uh, ingenuous our interpretation, oh sorry, ingenious, our <laughs> ingenuous, or how ingenious our interpretation of a particular symbol may be, <clears throat> excuse me, if it contradicts what is revealed in other places, we can assume it to be, we can assume it is wrong. One of the best illustrations of this principle is found in a puzzling passage in Daniel. Now, I probably don't need to tell you that a lot of these timelines use um, the numbers that you find in Daniel. Um, there's a number of different numbers that you find there. Uh, numbers of days, numbers of weeks, and people try and like figure out uh, what that means. Trying to figure out uh, how that relates to the second coming and, you know, when it's going to happen. So, um... I'm actually doing right now a, a playlist, um, uh, its own separate play, playlist where I'm critiquing Jody Stoddard's uh, timeline, uh, not to be mean and not to like say anything against her, but just because there's a lot of people that uh, have watched her timeline and it's uh, pretty compelling. Uh, I think there is a lot of good information in there, but I think there's also a lot of stuff that uh, we probably should take with a grain of salt or maybe even just disregard so make sure to look at that uh playlist um but anyway it, and um you know I, I, that's gonna actually be coming out um, i have it scheduled so i'm probably gonna put this video out first and then i'll put start the playlist so um so let's let's continue um as he closes his book daniel says quote from time from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate is set up, um, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and fifty, sorry, hundred and five and thirty days. End quote. That's in Daniel chapter twelve, verses eleven and twelve. So, what are these? What are these days? Um, are they literal days, or do they mean years? From the point of time, <clears throat> from what point of time are they marked? What future events are foretold in this passage? Here's a case where the Lord has not yet given us the key for interpreting a passage. Yet, after time after time, in the past and in the present, uh, people have sought to quote unquote crack the code, right? <laughs> and I've talked about that on my channel just. These people that think that they, I have the secret code, I figured it out, everybody. Um, and, and there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those people that think that they've cracked the code. So let's continue. Uh, they use this passage to predict the date of the second coming of Christ or the events associated with it. The declaration of Christ himself is clear and unmistakable. Uh, quote, but of the day, of that day and hour, uh, no one knoweth. No, not the angels of God in heaven, but my Father only. End quote. Um, I, I would rebuttal that because I, I've shared a quote from Joseph Smith that he gave saying that um, that pertained to, to that particular generation. But in this last dispensation, it is possible. And, and uh, I think he was talking about mostly the prophet would know. And uh, recently, 
in this last conference, uh, Elder Christoffel Golden of the 70, uh, he shared the Amos 3 scripture and the Joseph Smith translation that says that surely the, the Lord God will do nothing until he reveal it to the prophets. So um, I think that it is possible that the prophet himself, uh, maybe even the apostles know when it's going to happen. But as far as like you and me and, and cracking the code, uh, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we can know the season for sure. Uh, I think that we can know it's getting really close. But uh, but anyway, let's continue. Uh, this sets aside all other attempts to date the second coming, no matter how clever or logical the interpretation of the Daniel passage may seem. And, and I would say, I feel like there's been some people, not just Jody Stoddard, but others that have done a pretty good job, both inside and outside the church, that they they put together a pretty compelling case. But I, I'm sticking with this right here, because I, I think that this is the church's official point of view. Uh, that's why it's in the end sign. Um, so it is with the interpretation of all scriptural symbols. Uh, they must harmonize with other doctrine and revelation or be rejected. Uh, with these six guidelines in mind, let us examine some general categories of imagery used throughout many of the prophetic books of the Old Testament. And uh, it's kind of broken up into, into two sections, symbolism drawn from the human body uh, and then imagery drawn from nature. And then let me just do a quick little recap of these six um, principles here. One, uh, do the scriptures give the interpretation of the symbol? Okay, I'm not going to read what he says here. I'm just going to go, you know, hit all the, the bullet points here. So do the scriptures give the interpretation of the symbol? Number two, do the writings of modern prophets help, prophets help us interpret the symbolic imagery? Number three, uh, use the study aids in the new editions of the scriptures. And I would probably also add to that, not uh, that would probably be the most authoritative, but also use church manuals. You, we have access to the seminary and institute manuals. We have access to all these great um, ensign articles and New Era and for Strength of Youth and just all the church magazines, right? Um, number four, let the nature of the symbol teach you. Number five, uh, listen to the inspiration and promptings of the spirit. And then number six is the one that we went over, uh, just as a reminder, balance the interpretation of symbolism with other revelation and gospel knowledge. So um, I really, really, really think that we need to take any timeline with uh, a grain of salt, if not many grains of salt, and um, especially when it comes to these numbers, because uh, it's a good point. There has not been an official interpretation given for these numbers. Um, so I'll just leave it right there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. And uh, again, I, I would really like for you to share this because I think a lot of people are kind of being, I'm not going to say like misled or, or lied to, but um, I think that this is something that most people need to know. And uh, again, this, this is an authoritative source right here. This comes from the Enzyme. This is approved by the church. And uh, isn't this the sense that you get anyway from the church? Um, do you hear prophets right now trying to interpret uh, these numbers? Uh, do you think that just members of the church can put on little, you know, presentations and do little seminars, you know, with groups of people that that want to crack the secret code and know the hidden knowledge? Um, no, I, I, that's probably not how these things are going to be uh, revealed or interpreted. Um you know, it, it's good for us to watch for signs of the times and like really be learned um, in these matters. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I think that if you are, if you're doing a true, true study, you're going to come across things just like this. If you're using church sources, right, there's already been so much said and written about that you can find on the church website in regards to these things. But what I think a lot of people do is they they really like to watch other um, Christian denominations, like mostly evangelicals and their interpretations, because it's it's exciting and it's you know kind of spectacular and it um, you know it, but they they don't have the information that we do. You know we we are the the true church, we're the restored church, and um, 
I just I think you'd be blown away if if you could just see how much has already been written and uh, interpreted by the church. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you uh, liked it, hit the notification bell. Again, please share it. I think that this could benefit a lot of people. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.